Important points about the horse digestive system. It's no secret that horses are unique animals, and this is especially true when it comes to their digestive systems. Classified as non-ruminant herbivores, horses' digestive systems are a cross between those of monogastric animals, like dogs or humans, and ruminants, like cows or goats. The issue is that many people feed their horses like dogs or themselves, with one or two meals spread out during the day. This may be effective, but it frequently leads to difficulties. If more people understood how the horse's digestive system worked, they might be more inclined to feed their horses like horses. Here is some vital information for every equine veterinary student to know. We'll start with the mouth and work our way down and out because digestion begins there. Horses only chew on one side of their mouths at a time. They do this not with an up and down motion as we would, but rather with an outside to inside movement on a slant, determined by the slope of the corresponding surfaces of the upper and lower cheek teeth. If given enough forage, a horse can produce up to 10 gallons of saliva daily. The salivary glands function to moisten the diet and ease its transportation into the esophagus and stomach as the horse chews. Saliva also protects against gastric ulcers by neutralizing stomach acids. The horse's esophagus only works in one direction. Food can go down into the stomach but not come back up. Therefore, horses cannot vomit. The horse's stomach can only hold 2 gallons, which is small compared to other parts of the digestive system. Food stays in the horse's stomach for roughly 15 minutes. It then goes into the small intestine. Acid can harm the squamous cells in the stomach lining when the stomach is empty. This frequently leads to ulcers, and it's why small, frequent meals, a slow-feed hay net, free-choice hay, or pasture are so crucial. Most digestion occurs in the horse's small intestine, where sugars, starches, proteins, and fats are absorbed. Did you know that horses don't have a gallbladder? Instead, their small intestine, specifically the duodenum, digests fat for them. Water aids in the movement of food through a horse's digestive system, and if they don't drink enough water, impactions at the cecum, or, blind gut, can occur. The cecum and large intestine contain active populations of bacteria and other microbes that help break down food in fermentation. The bacterial and microscopic organisms become particular to the food a horse usually consumes while fermenting it. When a new diet is abruptly introduced, the bacteria and microbes cannot ferment it, which can cause colic. This is why any feeding adjustments should be made very gradually. Lignin, a dietary fiber abundant in overly mature hay, cannot be broken down by fermentation. As a result, it is excreted in the feces. Gut noises, borborygmus, are a sign that food is passing through the digestive system. If you don't hear gut sounds, something may have gotten stuck in the horse's stomach. For normal digestive tract function, a horse requires 1% of his body weight every day in long-stemmed roughage, grass, hay, or hay replacers. It takes the average horse 36 to 72 hours to digest its food, from mouth to manure completely. A horse's digestive tract is about 100 feet long, most of which are intestines. In the next section of this presentation, we will explore the physiological aspects of the horse's digestive system in more detail. Horse eating a meal that contains protein, fat, and carbohydrates, including starch and fiber. Chewing is the first stage of digestion, mechanically grinding the food, making it more available for digestion as it progresses through the tract. In the horse, chewing also stimulates the production of saliva, which lubricates the feed as it slides down the esophagus. Notice that the horse does not chew up and down like humans, but chews in a grinding motion. Dental care is vital in horses to help maintain this proper chewing motion.
The horse swallows the feed, and the feed bolus flows down the esophagus and into the stomach. Due to the sharp angle where the stomach and esophagus meet and the strength of the esophageal muscles, horses are not capable of vomiting. In the stomach, feed is broken down into starch, the yellow beads, fiber, the green beads, protein, the red blocks, and fat, the white globules. Notice the digestive enzymes released from the pancreas as nutrients enter the small intestine. The horse's small intestine is 70 feet long and feed flows through it for roughly 45 minutes. This is the primary site of enzymatic digestion. Starch, protein, and fats are all digested here, as well as the absorption of amino acids. Normal digestion and absorption carbohydrates in the upper gut. First, let's follow starch, the yellow strings of beads, and fiber, the green strings of beads. Alpha amylase enzymes from the pancreas enter the small intestine and break starch molecules into disaccharides, which are two glucose molecules bound together. Notice that the fibers flow on intact through the small intestine. There are no enzymes produced in the mammalian digestive system capable of breaking the bonds between the sugar molecules in fibers. As the disaccharides continue flowing through the small intestine, they bind to amylase enzymes in the lining of the intestine. These enzymes catalyze the reactions to break the disaccharides into their simple glucose components. Glucose is then absorbed through the intestinal wall into the vast blood capillary network that surrounds the gastrointestinal tract. In the blood vessels, glucose molecules, the yellow spheres, are transported to body tissues that will utilize them immediately for energy or to store for later use. Insulin is released from the pancreas in response to rising glucose and stimulates the movement of glucose out of the bloodstream into tissues. Insulin binds to receptors on the plasma membrane and allows glucose to move from the blood into tissues where it will be used for energy or other metabolic purposes, such as being stored as glycogen or used in the synthesis and storage of fat. Normal digestion and absorption fats in the upper gut. Digestion and absorption of fats differs from other nutrients because fats are not water-soluble. Unlike most species, horses do not have a gallbladder, but they're very efficient at digesting fat. Bile produced in the liver is continuously secreted into the horse's small intestine. Bile salts surround and emulsify the fat, making it available for enzymatic digestion by lipase from the pancreas. The resulting lipid products combine with bile acids and other molecules to form micelles, which then diffuse into the cells of the intestinal lining. The absorbed lipids are then repackaged with cholesterol and proteins into kilomicrons. Kilomicrons are too large to be absorbed into blood capillaries, so instead they're expelled from the cells and are taken up by the intestinal lymphatic vessels. They travel through the lymphatic system and finally reach the bloodstream via the thoracic duct, where the lipids can be used as fuel, incorporated into other compounds, or can be stored as fat. Normal digestion and absorption proteins in the upper gut. Enzymatic digestion of protein begins in the stomach with the enzyme pepsin, which breaks protein into shorter chain peptides. In the small intestine, Pepsin, trypsin, and several other enzymes from the pancreas and stomach further break down peptides into the specific amino acid building blocks. And these amino acids are absorbed through the intestinal lining into the blood capillaries. Amino acids are carried through the blood to the tissues where they are used to build proteins for many functions, including building and repairing tissues, components of enzymes, antibodies, hormones, and blood. Normal digestion and absorption, fiber digestion in the hindgut. The hindgut of the horse is about 25 feet long, but represents about 60% of the volume of the horse's digestive tract. The primary digestive role of the equine hindgut, which includes the cecum and large intestine, is the digestion and absorption of fiber. 
The cecum is located at the junction of the small and large intestines and contains billions of microbes such as bacteria and protozoa. These microbes produce the enzymes that break the linkages between glucose molecules and fibers. The end products of microbial digestion or fermentation in the hindgut are volatile fatty acids. These volatile fatty acids, or VFAs, are absorbed through the lining of the large intestine and are an important source of calories to meet maintenance energy requirements of the horse. Excess starches and sugars that are not digested in the small intestine are also fermented by microbes in the hindgut. But again, the results are volatile fatty acids, not glucose molecules. The only way to get glucose from fermentation in the hindgut is for one VFA, propionic acid, to be repackaged into glucose in the liver. This process is called gluconeogenesis. Proteins are also digested by microbes in the hindgut, but microbial digestion does not result in absorption of intact amino acids. Microbial protein digestion produces nitrogen and carbon skeletons that may be used by the body or excreted as ammonia. For horses to meet requirements for essential amino acids, they must be supplied by the diet in proteins digested and absorbed in the upper gut. Normal digestion and absorption, completion of digestion. In the large intestine, as muscular contractions move the digesta on through, digestion and absorption of nutrients continues, as well as the reabsorption of much of the water from the food mass. The microbes also produce some nutrients, such as B vitamins, some of which may be absorbed from the large intestine. The muscular contractions and reabsorption of water in the large intestine and colon results in somewhat dry, rounded fecal balls, which you then clean out of your horse's stall. It may be roughly three days before everything you feed makes the trip through the digestive system and onto the floor of your stall.